Hey, I'm Double Archangel. Welcome to this week's video. Have you ever thought Blender seems overwhelming, Unity and Maya complicated, and ZBrush is freaking expensive? Well, Dust Studios doesn't quite have that asset you are looking for, but you still want to have a cool looking 3D asset in your composition. But due to licensing, not even Envato Elements can help you out this time. Don't worry, because I had this exact same thought some years ago when I found out you can use free 3D. 3D print files as 3D assets in your composition. Now you can find these 3D print files being OBJ or STL for example from thingverse.com and in today's speed art tutorial video I will show you guys how I use Photoshop and dimensions to make awesome 3D assets from any angle to your composition. Now of course dimensions is part of Adobe Creative Cloud so there is an alternative option being Fusion. 360. It's free and you can find the download link down in the description. Anyway, this is gonna be a fun tutorial, so let's hop right into it. Okay, so let's load in the models so what i'm going to do is i have this specific model that i need and like so and then i decided that i will make in this program some tweaks some changes and that's being the cockpit obviously we have decided to download this model so that it's in many different pieces so i'm able to do this so the thing I'm gonna do is primary option is to keep this model white and in the default ma material we are adding metallic glossiness a little like some glossiness to it but still keeping it as light as possible. Now I am going to add a glass material and color it the way that the reference picture is so Okay, so the next thing we are doing, we're checking in Photoshop. Let's open up Photoshop. And so I have this picture of Santa Lucia that we are going to use. Now we need to check this plane, how it is. And according to this, we are checking where, where the light source is. And on this picture in Photoshop, we're checking that the light source is pretty neutral. So this square that I just made decides the angle of what our 3D object. So rotate this mech a little tilted forward and from a lower angle. Now, the next thing we need is the environment light. And you can rotate the light in this app and probably also in Fusion 360. I'm not quite sure with that. Anyway, here I will see that we have the highlights from behind. So what will mostly reflect will be the glass part, right? We see that we have the rotation right when we are making it so that the highlight will be from behind about so. And next up, I am going to go back to the canvas and we are taking away the background. So now when I have the 3D model set, we are going to render it. That's just going to the render. And so next up, I am opening up this file that we have. It gives this group with the depth map information. First off, I'm going to take away the background. Second off, we have in this group this. It's the depth map made by the program and we can use this later on. However, now we're gonna hide it and use this one, okay? So, next I'm going to copy this layer and add it to our composition. Just place it in this square that we made. Make the composition what I want and I will do this in a time lapse but we will hop right into the next phase. Next up we have this 3D model over here and I will add several rectangles that I will add above this so let's make first rectangle and then just copy this layer for the amount that we need. So I need one texture that is from top then I need one from the front one from the back and one that is underneath. So four of these rectangles 
should be enough, but let's make five. All of these are gonna be smart objects right away, but make them separate smart objects. Next up, I'm gonna hide all those and we are adding the main color to this one. So remember from this file, this material and object masks, right? I am going to use this and now I am going to copy this one and add inside this render. Add it above the 3D model so that we get it lined up like so. And now I am going to use this to my advantage. And now I will color this up in a time lapse with the main colors based on this reference that we have over here. Be right back. Okay, now when I've added the main color, the next step in this tutorial is to add these rectangles that we made to a smart object. And I will start with this one that is at the bottom and that one will determine the metal texture for the lower part of this mech. So what I'm doing next is just texturing the 3D object with a rectangle that I made into a smart object object and then we are warping it so that it fits better to the composition and clip it to the object and in blend if options we are taking down a little from the black and a lot from the white so we get this metallic glare back to the parts that we want to have highlighted like so and now I'm hopping into this smart object and in this we are just gonna add a metal texture we are changing the material easy as that aluminum let's use aluminum and bring it back at the places where I have metal parts so what I am doing now is I am adding texture to this, making it less plastic looking and more in comparison to what the material should be. So metal looking metal and so on. So I will do this in a time lapse, but this is how you make the 3D object look less like a 3D object and more like a 3D asset for your picture. I will get back to when I'm done the base textures and then we are going to solve this problem with these polygons that we are still seeing all over this model. So now when we have this 3D printed model made looking like a 3D asset, we still have the problem of these polygons, right? So what I'm doing is grouping together the whole asset and making it a smart object. And then after this, we are going to blur this with surface blur. I am going to blur it just so much that we are getting rid of the polygon texture. So by testing out, you see when it starts to look less polygony and more refined. I think that's about it. And now when I have this blurred out like this, I'm gonna make it the smart object again. And I'm going to mask it away. With a soft brown brush, we are bringing back the surface just on the place where we see that the polygons are clearly showing. Now I recommend that bringing back the blurriness only in the darker areas. So we are fixing the lighter areas after this. So here we have it now. This is before and that's after. So we see a huge difference, right? And we have one more thing for the tutorial. We still have some polygon left in the lighter areas and this we are make, gonna use the, the, the smudge tool to take away. What we can do now is copy this layer again that we just made and then rasterize the layer. And on this rasterized layer I am going to smudge these other areas. All the polygon shapes that are visible that are left that we want to get rid of in the lighter areas. We can now do by smudging the marks. Okay, so now the only thing that is left is making this a group and start making the normal blending options. But this is how I make a 3D print file into a 3D asset. And this is free. 
Now, of course, Dimensions is part of Adobe CC, but otherwise, this is ju just about a little skill and well that's about it so this is of course only my my version of the asset because i'm making the overwatch composition but you can do this with whatever sdl or obj file you like it's easy to just bring it into fusion 360 or dimensions keeping it white and then render it and bring it to photoshop in photoshop we go through what i just told you and that's the tutorial but now i will finish this artwork in a time lapse but i catch you in the outro three two one this week's video guys and I hope you learned something new from this tutorial and we'll make some awesome art with that brand new 3d content of yours even though what I said in the beginning if you decide to do whole environments in 3d I highly recommend still blender and giving it a go now my mentor and friend Nemanja Sekulik has the perfect channel 3d not 2d for you to learn the basics in blender so go check that one out if you haven't already so I highly recommend that channel and if you think this one was helpful give it a thumbs up and share it with others now this was this year's last tutorial but don't worry we will dive in to more advanced tutorials next year so stay tuned for that stay also tuned for the next video that will be a speed art of me making a custom kratos god of war poster anyway if you are new to this channel don't forget to subscribe and check out more of my tutorials right here or my next video here I'm Double Art Angel. You can find more art on Instagram as double underscore art angel or on DeviantArt as double arch angel. And I catch you in the next one.